getting up early. That's the tip. Well, kind of. There's a bit more to this tip than just that. No way. Gosh, that was awesome. Gosh. There's one. Oh my gosh. Heck yeah, baby. In this video, I'm going to share with you guys my best tip for increasing your catch rate during the warmer months, the spring, the summer, the fall, and talk about the magical time of the year known as the shad spawn. To truly understand bass fishing better and catch more of those suckers, you've got to understand the shad spawn and my number one tip. What are those? My name's Tyler, and let's talk about it. Another giant. Another giant. Look at that, y'all. I can't believe what I just caught. Yes! <laughs> I'm having so much stinking fun, it's crazy. Well, how's it going folks and welcome back to TRF. My goal here on this channel is to help you guys become better bass anglers and catch more fish. And so if that's what you want, hit that subscribe button. Now I wanted to make this video as broad as possible to encompass as many different types of anglers as I can. So bass boat, kayak, john boat, bank, anybody that fishes, at least for bass, this video is for you. And so to help keep this broad, I'm going to segment this video into two different sections. The first being my number one tip and the second being a master class on the shad spawn. I would highly recommend y'all watch both these sections but if you want to skip from section to section the timestamps are listed down below. So my number one tip for catching more bass in the winter months is really an easy tip. It's more of just kind of a mindset shift and that is you got to get up early. I know I've talked about this in the late summertime as well but especially when it comes to the post spawn in the summer you're going to catch more fish than your buddies if you get out to the water earlier than they do especially in the shad spawn which we'll talk about. So once the bass finish up their spawning process and spring has fully arrived in your area the post spawn is here and those fish are most shallow most active and most aggressive in the early morning. I'm talking about the first 30 minutes after the sun rises and I guess the 30 minutes of pre-sunrise before that. So making the effort to get up as early as you possibly can to get to the lake is not always easy. Before filming this video, I was sitting here, I was yawning because I am tired. I got up at 4.30 this morning to drive to the lake to hopefully get on an awesome shad spawn bite, which I did. And some of those hook sets y'all saw, absolutely incredible fishing. Stay tuned to the end, you're gonna see all those full catches. That's a big one, that's a big one. Now for those of y'all who live up north, I'm talking anywhere north of uh, Iowa, Iowa, Minnesota, Michigan, New York, getting up early is not necessarily as important. I bet there's some lakes and ponds out there where the morning bite is better, but for you guys, you don't really have like a hot summer. And even like your post spawn, everybody's still wearing like bibs and a jacket. The air temperature has been in the high 90s here in Texas the past few weeks, and that has really accelerated those fish to start leaving the banks after 30 minutes uh, in the morning, head offshore to offshore rock, offshore brush. And so if you want the best chance at catching fish, especially if you live in the hot states, Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, really anything in that southern belt, all the way up to, I'd say, Tennessee, you need to be getting out there early in the morning. I know it can be a struggle if you got kids or you got family to get out of the house early, but just set your alarm 30 minutes earlier than you think you need to. And I know this sounds like such a weird tip, like Tyler, no duh, I need to get out there. But I feel like reminding you guys once again, it is so dang crucial this time of the year to just get out there and be ready to go. Not rigging your rods as the sun is coming up, you are ready to make your first cast as sunrise starts. Doing this will not always result in you going from catching zero fish to 10 fish or having a horrible day to an amazing day. But the earlier you get out there in that post-spawn summertime, the better your chances are at just catching a few more fish, which can increase your morale as an angler and you never know when one of those could be a big one. Now that leads us to the second part of this video, the magical time of the year, and that is the shad spawn. Tyler, what the heck is the shad spawn? So every species has to do their thing, if you know what I mean. They gotta reproduce. Bass do it in pairs, one male, one female. I guess most mammals and, and bigger species of fish do it in pairs, but smaller fish, your bait fish, do not mate in pairs. They mate in groups. As a matter of fact, absolutely ginormous groups. They will just rub their bodies against each other, they will disperse the eggs and the fish juices, and man, it, it go to town. And and as you might be able to imagine, when the bait fish are doing that in a giant school, they're not really focused on protecting themselves. They are opening the door for any kind of predator fish to have an absolute buffet. I'm talking all three species of bass take advantage of the shad spawn. You've got stripers, you've got white bass, you've got sand bass. Literally any sort of shallow freshwater predatory fish is going to take advantage of a shad spawn. Now most of the time when I say shad, I mean bait fish. It's all shad to me. Living in Texas, I think that's something that I kind of grew up saying is that if it's a bait fish this big or a bait fish this big, they're all shad. But most of the time, 
time, the shad that we're talking about is threadfin shad, the one you see in my hand right here. I showed up to the boat ramp this morning and the threadfin shad were spawning everywhere. If y'all look closely at this shot here, you will see bait fish being washed up on the rocks because they are so concentrated and so shallow. Oftentimes, shad will be spawning so hard, they basically like throw themselves up on the bank and a bunch of them end up dying. And so as you can tell, they're not very smart. So if you show up to your body of water and you see stuff like that at the boat ramp, you can bet your bottom dollar there are bass somewhere around. Now, when does this shad spawn happen? If the bass spawn happens in the springtime for you, so I'm gonna kind of list some time spans for the bass spawn. Texas, anywhere from late February to late April. Uh, middle of the country, the Ozarks, it's kind of like uh, early April to late May sort of thing. And then you guys that live up north, your spawn is anywhere from mid-May to late June. So once that time period is like halfway to three quarters done for you, so the bass are almost done spawning, that's when the shad spawn usually begins. I hesitate to give any kind of water temperature gauge because every lake is different and oftentimes shad will spawn like crazy one day and then all of a sudden for no apparent reason at all they just shut off the water temp might have changed by like one degree the shad spawn is just a very finicky thing so what you're really looking for is for the bass to almost finish spawning that's when the bass will move off of their beds but still stay relatively shallow at least in the morning until it gets way too hot and they will feed on those bait fish very heavily now when does this happen in the day as i talked about in the first part of this video a lot of action in the summer post-spawn happens early, and the shad spawn happens really early. So early, in fact, it happens all night. I don't know the exact science behind it, but I can tell you guys one thing. Bait fish hardly ever spawn in the daytime. It could be a moon thing, could be a darkness thing. All I know is that when you get out to the water early, 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 that's when your best shad spawn success happens. As soon as that sun rises above the horizon, your time is running short. Because those bait fish will go from being on the top of the water column, ultra shallow, rubbing against each other and spawning, to all of a sudden out deep, maybe still in balls, but oftentimes dispersed. Now I have heard that there are sunset shad spawns as well. So when the sun is going down, I'm sure it would make sense, but I'm married and I'm usually not on the water at sunset. I'm usually having dinner, so I can't speak on that one. I really don't hear that many people talking about it though, so I don't think it's that stellar. So is chasing the shad spawn worth it for you? Well, if you fish in ponds, usually not. Most ponds out there besides like shallow farm ponds do not have a large population of bait fish, let alone a large population of threadfin or gizzard shad, the two main shads people target for bass fishing. I have spent a ton of time on lakes in Minneapolis and St. Paul, Minnesota, and I have never found a bait fish. I found tons of bluegill, tons of perch, but those don't spawn in the same way that bait fish do. And so if you live in those areas, this is not for you. Still something to learn for later in case you travel and do encounter a shad spawn but if you don't have bait fish in your pond, lake, or reservoir, the shad spawn is not even going to happen. And something else worth considering if you're thinking about going after the shad spawn early in the morning is do you know your body of water that well? If you're trying to go to a new body of water, you're trying to launch the boat before the sun comes up and then find fish in half an hour, that can be very challenging because bait fish, as we'll talk about, spawn on all sorts of different things depending on the lake. It's not even constant from lake to lake. Sometimes two lakes will look similar to each other, but the bait fish will spawn on totally different things. And so you've got to understand, sometimes based on prior experience, sometimes based on research, where your bait fish spawn on your body of water. And it might take a few days of trial and error, but once you find it, take advantage of the early morning shad spawn, get your butt out of bed, get out there and catch some fish. Now, where do you look for a shad spawn to even happen? I know I mentioned earlier on in this video, a boat ramp is where I found shad spawning. Really, it's anywhere that is a hard piece of cover. So it could be marinas or floating docks that have those dock floats as a great place to start looking. My next favorite is sea walls or riprap banks. So any kind of hard concrete wall or, or, or chunk rock bank, that's also a great place to look. And the last place that I could look is grass. Usually the thicker clumps of grass that are up shallow. So hydrilla, coontail, great places to find shad spawning. Lily pads, not usually so much. Shad need some kind of hard structure to spawn against. That's why they'll usually choose dock floats or rock. Now where not to look, usually mud and sand. I'm not saying you can't find shad spawning there, but for the most part, that's not their preferred place of spawning. Now, one of the easiest ways to find bait fish, especially if you can't see them flickering with your eyes, let's say that it's too windy, you can't see the bait fish being pushed up onto the bank, the best thing to help you out is going to be finding the birds. Wherever the birds are, that's where the bait fish are. It is not just predatory fish that take advantage of a shad spawn, predatory birds do as well. Now, lure selection when it comes to shad spawn, it all depends on where you are 
are fishing in what structure you're around. But the overarching theme is white, white, white. Shad really only come in one color and that is white. So fishing a marina for shad spawn, what should your lure selection look like? To me, I pick lures that I can skip or throw with accuracy to the back of boat slips underneath walkways. That's where you're gonna find your most success. And so usually it's a, uh, a buzz bait, a swim bait, vibrating jig, maybe a spinner bait without a skirt, soft plastic jerk bait like a Strike King caffeine shad. I love throwing those types of things around marinas and docks. You can also throw top water in very select situations as you'll see later on in this video. If you're fishing around retaining walls, you can basically throw whatever the heck you want. Top waters, crankbaits, soft plastics, a swim jig. There's not much to get stuck on because it is a flat retaining wall. And along riprap or chunk rock, the selection is basically the same as it is with a retaining wall. You can throw mostly anything, but I love throwing top waters and crankbaits. And like I mentioned, shad can spawn on shallow brush and shallow grass. And so if that's the case, a swim jig, a spinnerbait, and a frog are your best options. Now, two things that can prolong your shad spawn bite later on into the day, beyond that 30 minutes on a normal sunny day, are going to be cloud cover and dirty water. Cloud cover will keep the sun from penetrating into that water, and of course will keep those bait fish spawning for just a little bit longer. That doesn't mean though that if you have a really cloudy day like we have today, the bait fish are gonna spawn all day. I think there's still something having to do with the moon phase and or the sun coming up. Bait fish can sense that they're not gonna spawn all day long. And the second way they'll spawn longer is in dirty water. If you're in an Ozark Lake, a really deep clear reservoir, the shad spawn is really short. I've had times when it's like 15 minutes long and they are done. But in ultra dirty water, I'm talking like dingy six inch, four inch visibility, I've had shad spawn happen all the way to 10, 11 a.m. So again, this all comes back to understanding your body of water, where the shallow structure is, where the retaining walls are, and how healthy the bait fish population is in your body of water. Putting all those things together, you can have a very successful shad spawn. So how long does a shad spawn last for like days wise? I would say no more than a month. Oftentimes shad spawn is a very quick thing, like a week or two. And as soon as that is over, you can still catch fish on top water in the morning that might be feeding on bait fish or bluegill because bluegill spawn after the bass just as shallow. But once those shad are done spawning, that's kind of my trigger to let myself know, Tyler, the fish are most likely offshore, go start graphing. So let's hop on the water and see some shad spawn catches in a very unique way. No way. Gosh, that was awesome. Pitched it in the tire. That was awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. Bring it in here. Yes. Oh my gosh. He didn't even have the frog in his mouth. He swiped at it. Beautiful fish right there. Four pounder shad spawn. Gotta love it, baby. See you, girlfriend. Oh, that was awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. That was awesome. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh my gosh. Dang it. Ah, this camera back here wasn't recording. Boys and girls, I'm very upset at myself because this five pounder wasn't caught on this camera. Dang it. But they're in the tires eating bait fish. Look at that. Look at how I ate the pop and pad perch. It's gone. Ah, there we go. Beautiful five pounder. Chad spawn. Can't beat it. My girl. That's a big one. 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 Yes! Oh my gosh! Holy smokes! Oh my gosh! Wow! <sighs> Sorry, buddy. Talk about horsing him out of there. That right there is what you want to see. Oh, man, six pounder horsing him out of there. That's a big one. 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 Yes. Oh my gosh. Holy smokes. A six pounder on the shad spawn tires. Dang, that's awesome. Heck yeah, baby. See you, Mrs. Six Pounder. Whew. I'm having so much stinking fun, it's crazy. 
So what I've done now is I worked the entire stretch here at the Frog, got that four, five, and six, and so I switched to a little white rage crawl. And I think that any fish that might not have had the courage to come up and eat top water might just take a nibble at this rage crawl if flipped in the right tire. So that's what we're hoping. I have no idea if this will work. It could just be the shad spawn is over, even though we have cloud cover, which of course extended it beyond its normal time period. It is about an hour later than when the shad spawn usually stops. So it wouldn't surprise me if the fish just kind of shut off out of instinct, but they couldn't have gone far. Like where are they gonna go? Here we go. Ha 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 ha. It worked. It worked. Look at that. Got ourselves a fish that didn't want to eat the top water. The bummer is, smallest one yet. <laughs> still, still grateful for you though. There's one, there's one. Oh my gosh, holy cow, wow. That's like a uh, stinging catapult. <laughs> that was awesome, that was so cool. Andy stayed pegged. That right there is the Strike King flipping hook. Greg Hackney style, beautiful. Now, I don't know why all of the flipping fish are small so far. Well, boys and girls, we are on our last tire right here and it has slowed down significantly. Both the size and the quantity is no longer here. So I think the shad spawn is done for today. Like I said, cloud cover definitely extends the shad spawn, but I don't think if you have clouds and mist like I have today, it extends it all day long. I think the moon still has a play in it. And so since the moon is now down, the fish are down as well. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I know I had a blast catching them on the frog and the flipping rig. If you want to see my Texas rig how-to video, I'll leave it up here in the corner. And if you want to understand the frog better and be a better frog angler, I will leave that video boom, up here in this corner. My name is Tyler. It's been a pleasure as always, and we'll see you guys next time right here on TRF.